Item number SCP-3787 Object Class Archon Level 3-3787 Classified Threat Level Red Special Containment Procedures Outdated As the anomaly associated with SCP-3787 continues to change over time, its documentation appears here in chronological order. All observed changes to the properties of this anomaly will appear as addendum materials. Only the most recent version of this anomaly's containment procedures are viable. The original June 30, 2021 documentation is as follows. To ensure that horse breeding continues as a controlled element and to avoid further progression of the anomaly, Foundation personnel within the zoology department are to infiltrate various tiers of the North American horse industry. Analysts are to track domesticated horse populations for anomalous effects such as uncharacteristic or unprovoked aggression, deviance from feeding habits, and deviance from natural breeding cycles. As personnel cannot quantify the exact numbers of feral horse populations, known populations are to be monitored for abnormal behavior. To ensure no deviance to the well-being of baseline horse populations, personnel are to avoid sterilization efforts to current horse populations in an attempt to slow down birth rates and overpopulation. Instead, Hormonal Agent 7629A8-16-7 is to be dispersed among horse populations. 7629A8-16-7 targets horse endocrine systems to promote docility and extend breeding cycles. Due to the nature of SCP-3787 Echelon as a widespread anomaly, there are no known methods of containment. Containment initiatives are being accepted by the Site-82 Command Office. Keter Class remains the classification of this anomaly until such a point that acceptable levels of containment have been met. SCP-3787 describes the deviance to the natural behavior of domesticated and free Roman horse populations. Personnel have observed this deviance in the southern and southwestern United States though horse populations within the entirety of the U.S. and Canada are potential vectors for this anomaly. SCP-3787-A refers to the emergence of a gestation period eight to ten times more rapid than the baseline horse breeding cycle. The baseline gestation period of 11 to 12 months is shortened to a roughly 30 to 45 day period from conception to birth among horses affected by SCP-3787-A. Growth rates of this size over an extended period of time are unsustainable and pose a serious risk to the horse industry's ability to maintain it. Horses involved in this breeding cycle, including both newborn foals and pregnant mares, are not negatively affected by this accelerated gestation period. They develop within pregnant mares despite lacking the necessary sustenance over the accelerated developmental period. SCP-3787-B describes an anomalous increase in horse aggression in free roam horse populations. Personnel have observed SCP-3787-B in the Mustang population of Nevada, where the largest feral horse population in North America exists. Examples of aggression include unprovoked hostilities towards horses outside a constituent pack, the active killing of most or all members of a feral horse pack by that pack's dominant stallion, and in some cases, the cannibalization of foals as a show of dominance. Increase in horse hostility has extended into normal horse feeding patterns as well. Feral horse packs affected by this anomaly will carry out organized attacks on other wildlife escalating to the point of ignoring herbivorous feeding habits. This occurs despite horse jaw structures and digestive systems being biologically unsuited for meat consumption. This manner of aggression has led to the progression of horses to the top of the food chain in many areas. SCP-3787-B initially began in newborn foals affected by SCP-3787-A but has since transferred to an unknown number of horse populations of varying ages based on a geometric infection model. As well, this anomaly has developed in the same time frame and area as a second equine anomaly, designated SCP-3787 Epsilon. This anomaly refers to the immediate consequences of a marked increase of total horse populations, which has led to the increase of the equine in the human consciousness. 
SCP-3787 Epsilon is a designation given to an anomalous mimetic form of equinophobia, or the emergence of an intense fear of horses among humans with no previous basis to fear horses. Individuals may not be aware that they have been affected by this anomaly until they have been re-exposed to the concept of horses through forms of media, or through personal conversations that references horses. SCP-3787 Epsilon occurs in suburban areas and urban centers, and among populations far from rural communities. More specifically, SCP-3787 Epsilon occurs among populations with little access to that which is equine in nature. Individuals within these populations with a fascination for horses on any level are not affected by this anomaly. An estimated 350,000 individuals within the continental United States alone have contracted this anomaly. Addendum 3787.1 On June 30, 2021, Foundation efforts to reduce the heightened equine birth rate were deemed successful. The median horse gestation period leveled out to approximately 1.5 times the baseline. In the two months since the detection of the anomaly, Approximately 450,000 new horses were born in the United States alone. On July 12, 2021, Zoology Department personnel observed what they hypothesized to be an anomalous illness spreading throughout domesticated horse populations. Horses affected by this illness experienced a period of extreme stress, leaving them in a comatose state. In approximately 18.5% of cases, affected horses later expired. Approximately 37% of horses in the southern and southwestern United States have been afflicted with this illness. Research efforts into a cure for this illness have, as of July 29, 2021, proven ineffective. Addendum 3787.2 Since July 12, 2021, the accelerated spread of this illness has led to the death of approximately 1.1 million horses in the U.S. alone. On August 10, 2021, Site-82, in conjunction with the Scientific Department, published a report on Project Dire Horse, the SkipNet. A summary of the report is as follows. Summary of Project Dire Horse Project Dire Horse outlines the production of a significant synthetic horse population and the dissemination of this new population across the United States. This is to be done to mitigate the ongoing loss of horse populations and to produce a phenotype resistant to the effects of the anomalous illness. To achieve this goal, Dire Horse has employed the use of Ashley's Fields, a cattle farm in Newton News, Montana, which has been operating under the Foundation Front Company, Stratford Cattle Production, since 2010. Ashley's Fields uses an industrial farming facility responsible for the mass production of synthetic livestock in the place of modern farming techniques. Dire Horse makes use of the Rimmer Lister Hippological Similicrum RLHS prototype. This RLHS is capable of producing 500 artificially grown adult horses, or approximately 1,000 foals per hour within 99.91% genetic similarity of their natural counterparts. Horses produced by the RLHS are behaviorally engineered and mimetically hardened to reduce the potential effects of an SCP-3787-B spread into its population. In the event of a runaway equine extinction due to SCP-3787, the RLHS and its sentinel facility at Ashley's Fields are capable of storing up to 100,000 stable horses in cryonic storage for a period of up to 10 years. To reduce public awareness of the full extent of SCP-3787 spread, Dire Horse is to immediately begin to replace horse populations in 35 different states. Document 3787.0155 outlines information on this process. Any expired horses have been affected by SCP-3787 in any capacity are to be collected and sent to Site-41 for decommissioning purposes. Document 3787.0157 contains further information on the technical and logistical specifications of the RLHS. The Anti-Memetics Division Decommissioning Report The following file is Level 4-3787 Classified. 
Unauthorized access is forbidden. Project Dire Horse. To prevent environmental contamination, expired SCP-3787 affected horses are to be tagged and collected for decommissioning purposes. The nature of this decommissioning is as follows. Foundation personnel planted in the North American horse industry are to make note of all areas affected by mass die-offs due to SCP-3787. Archives of the full extent of SCP-3787's effects in the affected areas, including the number of expired horses, the source of the infection, and the speed of the infection spread, are to be kept. Personnel are to remove expired horses identified during this process from affected areas on an immediate basis. Civilians aware of the full effect SCP-3787 has had on affected areas are to be amnesticized using Class A amnestics. A network of Foundation web crawlers are to carry out mass media blackouts by purging any uncontained news reports on SCP-3787. A random pool of approximately 1,100 expired horses, 0.1% of all horses killed by SCP-3787, are to be stored for future testing. Expired horses are to be taken to Site-41 for neutralization. Neutralization efforts will operate with the end goal of destroying all expired horses affected by SCP-3787. As per procedure Iris Wristwatch, all destroyed subjects are to be broken down into a component slurry to begin the transformation to Class W, X, and Y amnestic material, as a primary component of modern amnestics is an admixture of various parts of horse anatomy. As of August 20, 2021, this aspect of Project Dire Horse has been taken over by the Anti-Memetics Division. Addendum 3787.3 On September 3, 2021, at 1.04 am, unknown anomalous entities attempted to force access into Site-41 before being repelled by automated lockdown procedures. A transcript of the encounter, as recorded by on-site surveillance, is as follows. Video Log Note, Due to the high volume of anti-memetic anomalies on site, all cameras at Site-41 are outfitted with a Marriott Passler anti-memetic perception filter, as well as standard night vision. This allows for the surveillance of most documented forms of anti-memetic or counter-conceptual anomalies. For the sake of identification purposes, the cameras outline anomalies corresponding to this description in red. Begin Log 1.04 AM A large, wheel-shaped entity comes into view approximately 350 meters from Site-41. The entity is identified by a contrasting red against the green hue of the surveillance footage. The wheel-like anatomical structure bypasses a surveillance pylon by rolling through it at approximately 50 km per hour, taking out two of the pylon's legs. Security alarms begin to emit a high-pitched whine as the entity continues towards the site, at which point it begins to slow down. MTF Chai-10 Oxygenated Morons, a three-man fast insertion unit, comes into view approaching the entity on a military ATV outfitted with an M2 heavy machine gun. At this point, the entity forms a ball and begins to expand. MTF Chai-10 is aware of the entity due to excess memetic emissions from Procedure Iris Wristwatch present in the air. What the fuck? Just fire, they took down our guard tower. Firing. MTF Chai-10-3 fires a five second long burst at the entity, expelling 75 rounds. The entity's outer layer makes a popping sound before emitting loud equine vocalizations. An individual entity separates from the larger entity and gallops towards MTF Chai-10. A horse? What the fuck? MTF Chai-10-2, who is operating the vehicle, begins to reverse before circling the larger entity in a wide arc. The individual entity matches speed and chases the unit for approximately 40 seconds, before latching itself to the back of the ATV. The larger entity then disappears from view. MTF Chai-10-3 fires a 10-second burst of the individual entity, expelling 150 rounds. The entity breaks apart into many smaller portions. The scattered portions continue to move, implanting themselves on the various places of the ATV. Keep firing! The thing Swiss cheese! I don't have anything to fire at! Small portions of the entity enter open section of the ATV, causing it to cease operation. 
Alright, everyone out. Let's head behind the blast doors before the automated systems kick in. Right, let's move. That thing gave me the creeps, but where did the other bogey go? Not sure, let's go. MTF Chai-10 exits the ATV and makes her way to the site of Site-41. They enter through a large blast door, which reinforces itself upon closing. Outside, the visible entity squeezes the rest of its body into the vehicle. Equine vocalizations continue for the next ten minutes. Soon after, the larger entity appears approximately 100 meters from the facility. The entity takes the form of a large ball approximately 2 meters in diameter. The entity begins to roll towards the facility, gaining immense speed. It moves towards the site at approximately 150 km per hour, impacting the side of the facility and causing structural damage. The camera is sent offline from the impact, while audio surveillance continues. Site systems at this point log the activation of high-power 2,000-watt floodlights located around the facility, an automated feature to prevent intruders via disorientation before weaponized systems activate. Audio surveillance picks up a sharp equine vocalization, loud at first, but eventually becoming fainter before terminating. End log, 1.26 AM. Closing Remarks Site-41 reported no further sightings of the larger entity after 1.26 AM. By morning when lockdown lifted, an investigation into this entity within the ATV occurred. Security personnel found the entity within the ATV blackened and shriveled, terminated by prolonged exposure to the intense light. Extended research into the nature of these entities, designated SCP-3787-N, has begun. Addendum 3787.4 On September 5, 2021, individuals affected by SCP-3787 Epsilon experienced a spontaneous shift in anatomy, becoming more equine in nature. Not all affected individuals were able to make a full transformation, with some expiring before the full transformation became possible. Individuals undergoing this transformation have designated SCP-3787 Epsilon-1. As well, Foundation personnel specializing in anti-memetics training have begun to make notes of large numbers of SCP-3787-N. These entities have begun to appear en masse as a direct result of extended Foundation efforts to control North American horse population numbers. A full description of SCP-3787-N is as follows. SCP-3787-N Description each instance of SCP-3787-N is part of a collective of predatory anomalous organisms. SCP-3787-N are semi-humanoid equine entities, each composed of a malleable cartilage structure, integrated with groupings of musculature typical of the common horse. Instances have a thin epidermis with slight brown coloration. A defining feature of SCP-3787-N is the cranium which is similar in shape to that of a horse, but on a smaller scale. At the bottom of the cranium is a muzzle of equine nature, from which equine vocalizations are possible, as well naturally occurring braided hair, similar in consistency to that of horse hair, is visible in the form of a mane and a tail. Each individual strand of horse hair is autonomous, despite SCP-3787-N efforts to remain static in its positioning. While SCP-3787-N have dull, rounded teeth, instances take part in carnivorous activities. Instances have been observed to consume human beings and in instances of SCP-3787-Epsilon-1. Despite this, SCP-3787-N do not feed for sustenance purposes, and instead choose to hunt for recreational purposes. Despite their intelligent nature, SCP-3787-N lacked the ability to use tools or equipment. Each instance of SCP-3787-N attacks in a manner solely involving their bodies, or in conjunction with other SCP-3787-N as a group. All appendages, including the arms, legs, and tail, are capable of being contorted, elongated, and wrapped around themselves. For example, SCP-3787-N will balloon their body as a form of defense. Instances will also mount each other, combining in tandem with the formation of wheel-like anatomical structures. This is done to use their collective body masses as vehicles for transportation. 
When this occurs, speeds of up to 100 km per hour have been observed, though further velocities are theoretically possible. SCP-3787-N have a strong revulsion towards most forms of visible light, even to the point of being damaged physically by exposure to it. Personnel making contact with SCP-3787-N are advised to carry any forms of light-based weaponry available, ranging from LED spotlights to hard-light weaponry prototypes. No other means of damaging SCP-3787-N exist. Sightings of SCP-3787-N have almost always occurred in nocturnal settings, which has led them to become colloquially known as nighters, among Foundation personnel. SCP-3787-N manifests in groups ranging from 5 to 500 instances. Instances are known to manifest near domestic and thoroughbred horse farms, SCP-3787 Epsilon-1, and feral horse packs. Addendum 3787.5 Containment analysis at Site-82 have come to understand a complex relationship between the appearance of SCP-3787-N and the previous equine anomalies. Analysts have concluded that the emergence of increased equine aggression and accelerated birth rates was in part a widespread anomalous defense mechanism tailored towards the repulsion of SCP-3787-N. However, recent reports have shown that this behavior is almost reversed, in due part of the influence of SCP-3787-N entities. The latest development has prompted the reclassification of SCP-3787 to an Archon-class anomaly. The Foundation is now undergoing wide-scale internal research efforts focused on the anomalous nature of the equine as a species. Since the appearance of SCP-3787-N as a collective, North American horses have begun to deviate from their normal behavior. Almost all horse populations have begun to display SCP-3787-B and attack humans, leading to civilian casualties beyond Foundation control. In areas with a high volume of SCP-3787 Epsilon-1 instances, SCP-3787 Epsilon-1 as a population have begun to form large groups despite pre-existing human class structures. These groups have begun a mass pilgrimage to a yet undesignated area in the American Southwest, being led by groups of SCP-3787-N. How the two groups communicate is currently under active investigation. Various North American equine anomalies have begun acting in an anomalous manner that deviates from their documented behavior. Equine anomalies seem to have taken an adversarial position on humanity as a whole, and are acting in the best interest of SCP-3787-N populations. A full list of the changes to these anomalies is as follows. Equine anomaly Documented behavior Behavior post-SCP-3787 emergence SCP-042, a wounded sapient horse that spreads a sense of euphoria after making physical contact. The horse destroys most forms of vegetation it makes contact with by dehydrating them. SCP-042 manifested a wingspan approximately 15 meters in width, which it used to breach containment by flying over the fence of its enclosure. Contact with SCP-042 was lost for approximately three hours as it entered a high altitude. Contact was remade when Foundation personnel became aware of reports of a flying horse above Sedalia, Missouri. When personnel arrived, almost all of the city's 21,000 citizens had been afflicted with horse fever, which made them believe they were horses. The use of amnestics have not been able to reverse the effects of horse fever. SCP-1556 A group of 15 Mustangs that manifest during foggy conditions in the American Midwest. SCP-1556 manifested in downtown Houston, Texas after a dense fog and gale force winds were reported. The horses displayed hostility, engaging in attacks against civilians for approximately 16 hours. Attack civilians were later reported to behave in an equine manner and were later designated as instances of SCP-3787 Epsilon-1. It is estimated that over 3,400 civilians have been affected by this anomaly. SCP-2514 A horse that sings a modified version of Happy Birthday to You at a high volume, instilling joyful memories into anyone that listens while emitting pyrotechnics. 
The Director of Area 12 found SCP-2514 out of containment and inside his office. After following the Director around for the next 12 hours and causing damage to his surroundings with pyrotechnics, SCP-2514 demanifested. The next day, on September 7, 2021, SCP-2514 re-manifested within Site-17 and turned all human-produced food within one kilometer of Site-17 into horse feed, while following around any personnel with a birthday. Site-17 personnel were advised not to consume the horse feed. All food shipped to Site-17 within the next 36 hours was also rendered as horse feed. After 72 hours, personnel attempted to consume the horse feed fell into a comatose state and emitted equine vocalizations. SCP-3996 An intangible feral horse pack that manifests within the Nevada Great Basin Desert every 12 hours. Individuals that choose to ride on the horse pack during its manifestation are brought to a tangent dimension with a high hume level. SCP-3996 manifested in a normal manner. Agent Emily, upon mounting one of the manifested horses, expected to be brought to the tangential frontier of SCP-3996-1. Instead, Agent Emily was taken to the origin place of SCP-3787-N instances. As of the creation of this document, the equine anomalies have yet to be recontained. SCP-3787-N have directed efforts towards creating an equine ethnostate composed of both horses and SCP-3787 Epsilon-1 populations. Contact with passing equine populations by any non-equine populations have led to confrontative behavior by SCP-3787-N to protect equine populations. Foundation personnel attempting to hinder the effects of SCP-3787 also face aggression by SCP-3787-N, and in some cases, become transformed into horses by unknown means. Addendum 3787.6 MTF-Pi-5 Glue Factory has been formed to repel the attacks of SCP-3787-N. Each member of MTF-Pi-5 is trained to deal with antimimetic anomalies and are to remain on a strict Class W amnestic prescription. A summary of the task force's equipment is as follows. 40 combat operatives using light-based weaponry such as the 1000-watt N62A laser optics pistol, the 2000-watt G1A tactical solid-state laser rifle, and the prototype 30,000-watt Basok Prokhorov RX-7Z hard-light heavy rifle, Null Taker. 4,000 lumen flashlights and interfaces with night vision and blue light eye protection lenses, 15 Polaris MV-800 ATV medium support vehicles outfitted with light reconnaissance laser optics, LALO gun platforms, 10 Chenoweth RAV light action support vehicles, 4 SLSX support drones with Marriott Passler antimimetic perception filters. Despite the formation of MTF-Pi-5, the full containment of SCP-3787-N and any related anomalies is not believed to be possible due to their widespread nature. Foundation efforts are directed towards reducing any public fear of SCP-3787-N. <laughs>